Oh, good morning guys. Uh, I'm on my way to work on the Martin Cooper project right now in my shop. Uh, I'm going to drill out the peg heads today using a little fixture which I myself designed and have been using for a while to do peg heads. Um, before I get to that, I just want to give you a quick look around my shop and, and show you what I use to build the guitars that I built. And I built dozens of guitars in this shop. Uh, this is just going to show you that you do not need a big, huge shop to build guitars. All right, coming through the door, the entire thing is made out of 6 mil reinforced plastic, nylon. Uh, ceiling is uh, coated with it as well so the dust doesn't get upstairs in the house. Uh, here's one of the walls. Uh, right here you're looking at is a table. I keep on uh, things I use for uh, shellacking. Uh, I make my own shellac. I do not use a uh, factory, so... That's why the bottle of Everclear is sitting there. You know, you're looking at hand planes, uh, respirator, things like that, rubber gloves, uh, water. Uh, for that, uh, let me move over here. Uh, there's uh, sandpaper, um, you know, files, dremels, all those sort of things are kept in those little drawers there. And I do keep some of it on a table. It's a little messy right now. My dado head blade down there. Uh, in that guitar is, or in that case, excuse me, is a 1880s guitar which a client brought to me for restoration. He asked that I not show that to anyone or show the work being done on it due to the value of it. He's afraid someone may steal it, so I'm going to honor his wishes on that, and so you will not be able to see that, unfortunately. But uh, moving around the rest of the way, there's my little bench, uh, a couple of you know power strips plugged in and stuff. Uh, my bandsaw is on there. You'll see there's a pile of uh, extras left over from various guitars that have been built. Uh, here's a good tip for you. Keep your extra parts. You can always use them uh, in laying or as accents to other projects. So it's a good idea to keep that stuff and not throw it away. You never know when you may need it. Uh, I'm going over here. It's just my little portable drill press with the uh, peg head or friction tuner jig that I have made. We're going to use. Uh, there's some drill bits in my boxes there. Uh, down below there I keep a, a shop vac which is attached to everything in here to also help keep the dust down. There is my you know, side bending fixture. There is a couple of other fixtures and forms laying down underneath the bench there. Come around here you see my oscillating sander. It's sitting on top of my table saw. Uh, it's there because it was the last thing that I used and that's where I use it. And uh, the, the miter box you see on the floor is also used up here on top of this table saw. Around here, there's pretty much empty. I just keep uh, some extra forms and things and some extra materials. In the corner, there's a Solera, which I'm going to be using to build a uh, flamenco guitar, and that's the uh, rest of the mold for it. Okay, coming back around to the front here. Uh, it's my workstation or my table here. It's nothing more than my old kitchen table with a four foot by two foot piece of uh, ply, three quarters of an inch thick, clamped to it, and right now what you're looking at here is the uh, Martin Cooper project. Obviously you know there was lost video, so uh, unfortunately you did not get to see most of the build, but uh, this is what it looks like. Right now I'm French polishing this here. Uh, what you're looking at here is a inlaid pickguard. Martin did that from 1880s to by 1910. It was virtually extinct due to the fact it was uh, cost prohibitive. But uh, there was a few people who requested them later on, like uh, Gene Autry had them put on some of his guitars. Um, looking at the uh, fretboard here, you can see I did put uh, larger abalone fret markers in there to match our sound hole and also uh, our bridge. Uh, there's the peg head itself. Uh, and uh, that's about it. So uh, you can look at the, uh, look at the back here once. Uh, as you recall, they used to have the zipper stripe down here, but I felt that that was too much with the uh, stripe on the side as well here. So what I did is uh, <clears throat> I went and, and took that out of there, routed it all, removed it, and then added this uh, piece of uh, coca boa, straight grain coca boa from my scrap pile, and then added these two white maple stripes, 20 thousandths wide, to help enhance our uh, ivory foot on our heel of our neck. Yeah, coming up the rest of the neck, this is the back side of the peg head here, which has also been uh, 
pardon me, which has also had a uh, veneer put onto it. And there are the uh, peg heads that we are going to drill out. Uh, I think uh, the entire thing in here is probably less than 500 square feet. So as you can see, you do not need a very large area to make guitars repair them if you are smart about how you use your space. And you also don't need a lot of fancy tools. As you can see, I'm very, very limited on power tools. I have my bandsaw, my drill press, uh, table saw, and miter box, of course, which are required. And the uh, spindle sander is not required, but it is very helpful. So let's move on to the fixture and start working. I do prefer fluorescent lighting. As you can see, there's uh, two large three-foot fluorescent bulbs in here. Uh, that right there is a uh, air scrubber or smoke eater, if you want to call it that. Uh, I did not shoot video of building this, but if you're interested in building one like this, uh, just shoot me a comment down below there, and I will draw up some prints, and then when I change the filters on this, I will give you an inside with some photographs, and then you'll be able to see how this is put together. Very simple very cheap. I think it cost me less than fifty dollars to build. And here we can be with my fancy stereo system which is nothing more than my Bluetooth speaker for my cell phone and I got music in here all the time. So as you can see you do not need a lot of space to build guitars and I do 99 percent of my work by hand and in a very small space if you're efficient with it you can build guitars. You do not have to have a large shop.